This weekend, the Gamecocks will hit the road to take on number 23 Tennessee with a 7.30 kick. For Carolina News, I'm Brianna Walton. And the disappointment didn't last too long for Blake just five minutes after he dumped water all over Gage to help him celebrate his biggest win yet. In Spartanburg County, Brianna Walton, 7 News Sports. The Greenville Triumph is peaking at the right time, but they have a tough road ahead of them as they try to stay in a race for the number one spot, starting with Central Valley this Saturday. In Greenville, Brianna Walton, 7 News Sports. On the other side of the state, Clemson softball team is also getting geared up for this season. I know if you're a Gamecock fan this week is really looking up to you. you got the parade you got spring game this week and it's also a chance to see what this football team is going to do for South Carolina. Are these team camps are vital. One of the biggest motivators for the players at this camp are the players that came before them. Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen and Clemson's own PJ Hall. After a tough weekend in Georgia, South Carolina gets their first SEC win of the season against Mississippi State. The tone of the Gamecocks offense was set from the very first drive of the game. Spencer Rattler connects with Xavier Leggett for the 76-yard reception. I just see you straight green grays. <laughs> Rattler continued to be consistent for the Gamecocks in this offensive battle with Mississippi State, where both quarterbacks would go back and forth. One of the difference makers for this game was South Carolina's ability to run the ball. Tonight was very balanced, you know, um, very efficient in the pass game, aggressive in the run game. Um, we, we could run the ball, it's easier to throw the ball. A big part of that run game was Mario Anderson. He scored his first rushing touchdown of the season. You know, we just gave Mario a game ball in there for the way that he ran the football. So we're proud of him, um, but certainly Mario showed what he can do tonight. South Carolina defeat Mississippi State with a final score of 37 to 30. Next weekend, the Gamecocks will hit the road to take on number 23 Tennessee with a 7:30 kick. For Carolina News, I'm Brianna Walton. Meredith McFadden became the team bullpen catcher heading into the 2023 baseball season. McFadden has played baseball her whole life. My heart's in baseball and couldn't I couldn't see myself doing anything else outside of baseball. So they're happy that I could stick with it, especially at this level, being a part of this team. McFadden made her way into the Gamecocks bullpen by sending an email to the baseball coaching staff. Well, I reached out to the coaches and at the time, coming in my freshman year, there wasn't really an availability. And then over this past summer, uh, they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to, if I was still interested and if I wanted to come out to Founders Park for a tryout in the late summer. And I was like, uh, yeah, 100%. Gamecocks pitching coach Justin Parker says that there is no change in the bullpen with Meredith being a female. Just, we kind of look at it as a family. I mean, I don't, don't really look at it as male, female. Obviously, all the players are male. A ton of contributions uh, here from, from several females. And Meredith just, you know, just kind of one of the one of the family. Meredith played for the U.S. Women's National Baseball 18U team and tried out for the Olympic team, but didn't make the final roster. Meredith also had collegiate offers at other schools. I had the opportunity to play like at the like D2, D3 levels, but I knew that USC was my dream school and I couldn't picture myself going anywhere else. So, you know, I made that decision for me that I didn't want to compromise not going to USC just to say I played baseball in, high, in college. Meredith mentioned that she would continue to try out for the Olympic team, and hope that her experience at South Carolina would get her on the final roster. For Carolina Insider, I'm Brianna Walton. Starting this week, Girl Games is officially on campus at UFSC. Junior Elena Potison was encouraged to start Girl Games due to her own experiences in the gym. I would like go to the bottom floor and I would run up and down and leave the gym really fast. And I didn't want to come to the main weight room because I was like, no. Like that's where the food Hodison added the main purpose of Girl Games is to inspire and promote weightlifting for women. Very intimidating for women to be able to step in the gym, try to figure out what they're doing without that support system. According to womenshealth.com, one in three women fear feeling out of place in the gym, and nearly 43% feel self conscious about their appearance while working out. Strong personal trainer Sarah Steger mentions how she notices that majority of that fear is mental. So much anxiety around the fact of like, I'm walking into the space and I don't know what I'm doing and like people are gonna judge me for that. 
To help combat that fear, Girl Gains has a swole mate program to set up workout partners for the members. Co-founder Sam Schneider says she is grateful for the outcome and support. It's been great. We are literally in the very beginnings of our beautiful friendships. Girl Gains mission is to promote female weightlifting and empower women to feel strong and beautiful in a judgment-free community. For Carolina Insider, I'm Brianna Walton.